Okay, what's the definition of the observer and what is the observer? Well, the definition of, well, what is the observer? Well, the observer, I, I use the observer as a tool. You could say that the, so there's different types of observer. Uh, um, so let's say someone believes that the, they are the body and the thoughts. I am my body and I am my thoughts. So, you know, the, the observer is just a way, a tool to, de to disidentify, to detach, to let go of being hooked into the body and the thoughts. So the, the, I would say try being the observer of the body and thoughts. So what I mean by that is can you access an observer, which is not your body and thoughts, a witnesser behind the body and thoughts? And if you can, then that's the first stage in detaching from the, which is a spiritual awakening from the idea that you had before that you were the body and the thoughts and you couldn't get a separation from them. So that's a spiritual awakening. So you're in the, you're in that observer, which is spiritually awoken from being a body and thoughts. And, and that's what it was, its experience was. Then you've got the, um, you've got the observer, uh, uh, you've got the observer of that, you know, if that observer is identified with anything like that observer, though, is quite interested in handbags even though it's not the body and thoughts then you could see is there an observer that is detached from handbags that doesn't get hooked in to identify or absorbed with handbags as objects so you then become that observer which is not the body which is not the thoughts and not handbags and then you go but you know there's still uh, there's still uh, there's still a world that's being observed a detached observer of the world and well what's observing that observer and does the world still exist? So, at the end, I mean, if there's at the end, of course, if there's if there's no separation, there's no observer and that which is observed, uh, then you, there, the observer ceases to exist. So then, just what remains is what remains. Without not there is no obser observer separated from that which is observed. So that collapses, and therefore the end of that that tool when there's nothing else to observe and there's no observer and nothing that's observed. And then what that remains then is beyond uh, the tool of the observer because the observer has a slight duality, like, okay, there's an observer observing everything and there's something that's being observed. So there's a this and a that. So is there a place where the this observer and that world or that existence doesn't exist? So that no observer and no this or that exists at all. So then you collapse, the, the, you're beyond even the word observer. So the me, so the I'd say the, the, the observer is a tool to start detaching from things that are identified and create the experience of duality. But even the observer is a dualistic notion at the end, which is even, even that disappears because there's a duality of a observer and something that is observed. So when that disappears, the meaning and the need for the observer is disappear. So what is the what is the meaning? Well, I just um, the meaning of the observer is just to start detaching from very limiting things that you you thought you were, like I thought I was the body. But now there's an observer which knows it's not a body. There's an observer which knows it's not thoughts. There's an observer, you know, and there's something beyond an observer where the observer doesn't exist and none of this exists. So um, uh, what is the meaning? I mean, in the end, when, you know, uh, uh, it's just beyond all of that. So it's just a tool, like self-inquiry is a tool until you don't need to use it. Canceling beliefs is a tool until, of course, the miracle says at the end, now you can throw away the book. When there's no more, there's no more work to be done. That, that's the end, you see, beyond all the lessons and beyond everything. Um, so that that's my um, 